Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Nimmer and in this short video I'll be explaining to you the critical path method. The critical path method is a method which is used to estimate the duration of a project. As far as a project is concerned, a project consists of a sequence of activities and not just one activity. An activity is denoted by a rectangle. Because an activity is usually a process, it takes a particular amount of time to complete. This amount of time is known as the duration of the activity. So if we had an activity called A with a duration of four days, using the critical path method, it will look something like this. So you have the activity in the rectangle with a name in the middle and the number above, which would signify the duration of the activity. Of course, a project has more than one activity because it would be impossible to complete a huge project within just one activity. Even if the project is small, it would be impossible to complete it in one activity. Now, if we had a project with three activities, with A being the first, B being the second, and C being the third activity, it would look something like this. So we have activity A, then we have an arrow pointing towards activity B, and then an arrow pointing towards activity C. If you notice the direction of the arrows, the direction of the arrows signify the sequence of the activities. This diagram is known as a network diagram. And it is a tool which is used by project managers to visually represent a project. Now, let's add durations to this uh, diagram. So if we had uh, durations for these activities, with activity A having a duration of three days, activity B having a duration of four days, and activity C having a duration of two days, it'll look something like this. So you have activity A with three days on the top, then an arrow, and activity B after that, four days above it, and then you have activity C at the end with two days. This is how the project would look like using the network diagram. This diagram is known as a network diagram. So the duration of the project would be the duration of activity A, activity B, and activity C combined, since these are the only three activities in this project. So we would do an A plus B plus C, which would be equal to the duration of these activities, 3 plus 4 plus 2, which is equal to 9. Before we go ahead, certain um, basic concepts. Now, a preceding activity is an activity which comes before another activity. Now, in this example below, A is the preceding activity to B. So you have activity A, an arrow, and you have activity B. You can also show this with the help of a table. So here you have the activities in the first column, A and B, and to the right, you have the preceding activities with A having no preceding activity. You can see there's a blank there and uh, the preceding activity of B is activity A. Now if these are activities in a table with their preceding activities, let's try to make a network diagram. So the first activity is activity A it has no preceding activity at all. That's why we know it's the first activity. The next activity is activity B. That's because the activity which precedes B is activity A. So you have activity B here. Then the activity after activity B is activity C. And at the end, you have activity D. Now let's add durations to uh, the same table. So you have activity A with a duration of two days, then activity B with a duration of five days, activity C with a duration of four days, and activity D with a duration of one day. Based on the duration of each of these activities, the duration of the project would be the sum of the duration of all the activities, 
which would be equal to 2 plus 5 plus 4 plus 1, which would be 12 days. If these are two activities, activity A and activity B, it is possible that only after these two activities are completed, we can go ahead for another activity, activity C. So in this example, uh, we have an activity with two preceding activities. So activity C has two preceding activities, A and B. In order to start activity C, you would first have to finish both activity A and activity B. This is an example wherein right after you finish activity A, you can go ahead and start both activity B and activity C at the same time. You would not be able to start either of the activities until and unless you do not finish activity A. Please note that activity B and activity C can occur at the same time. That's because there is no relationship between them. If there was a relationship between them, they would have been connected with each other using the help of arrows. Now, if you look at this diagram, you can see that this diagram has certain roots. These roots are known as a path. A path is basically a route from the start to the end. And this network diagram has two paths. So you have a path ABD and path ACD. So this is your path A, B, D, and this is your path A, C, D in blue. Now, if you would denote this with the help of a table, you have the activities, the preceding activities, and we've also added uh, information about the duration of these activities. So we've included the duration of the activities here now. The duration of activity A being four days, the duration of activity B being two days, the duration of activity C being three days, and the duration of activity D being one day. This network diagram has two paths. Path ABD with the duration of seven days, four plus two plus one, and path ACD with the duration of eight days. 4 plus 3 plus 1. So this network diagram has two paths. The longest path is known as the critical path. And in this example, ACD is the critical path. That's because it is the path with the longest duration, which is 8 days. The duration of the critical path is the duration of the project. And hence, in this example, the duration of the project would be 8 days. Now, let's practice this. So, you have a table with a set of activities. Then you have preceding activities mentioned in the next column, along with information about the duration of each of these activities. So, let's begin with the first row. You have activity A with no preceding activity and a duration of two days. Let's go to the second row now in the table. You have activity B with no preceding activity and a duration of three days. The third row, activity C. You can see that activity C has two preceding activities, both A and B. So it will look something like this on the network diagram, A and B, converging to C with the duration of one day. The fourth row has activity D with activity C as its preceding activity. Activity D has a duration of four days. You then have activity E for which activity C is the preceding activity with a duration of five days. And the last activity is activity F and both activity D and activity E are the preceding activities to it. Activity F has a duration of two days. Now we're trying to find out uh, the duration of the project over here. So we would first need to identify all the paths, identify the duration of the paths, 
and then find out which path has the longest duration. The path with the longest duration would be the critical path and that duration would be the duration of the project as well. The time it would take to complete the project. But first, uh, let's look at the paths first. Let's identify the paths with their durations. So you have path A, C, D, F with a duration of nine days. So A, C, D, F. You add up their durations, two plus one plus four plus two, which is equal to nine days. The next path, A, C, E, F, with a duration of 10 days. This is A, C, E, F in blue. A, C, E, F. You add up the duration of each of these activities in the path, they add up to 10 days. The next path is B, C, D, F, with a duration of 10 days. So it's here in orange. Look at the arrows, B, C, D, F, the duration of 10 days. And then the last path is path B, C, E, F, with a duration of 11 days. Arrows in red, B, C, E, F. You add up the duration of all of these activities, they amount up to 11 days. If you have a look at these four paths, you can easily identify that the last path with 11 days is the path with the longest duration. This path is the critical path. And this path is the duration of the project. That was easy. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. And you could subscribe to my channel. You could also follow me on my LinkedIn, which I've put up in the description. For any updates regarding any videos on project management or marketing which I'll be posting from now on. Thanks a lot, God bless you all.